My name is Deacon Tom Hampson. I want to welcome you today to our celebration of Palm Sunday. We're delighted that you're here with us and we'll be beginning shortly. Thanks so much. Good morning. Welcome to our Palm Sunday service. As you know, Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week for us. And uh, Holy Week is about reenactment. It's about us going step by step with Jesus to Jerusalem and on the way to the cross and beyond. It's a dramatization. And so we're going to dramatize one part of that today in a couple of familiar ways. We're going to be distributing palms and having our sort of smallish palm procession out the back of the church, around the corner, and back in here, recalling that moment in the life of Jesus when he entered Jerusalem in triumph. And then, a few minutes after that, we're going to have a dramatic reading of the Passion of Jesus. A word about that reading. As you probably recall from other times when you've heard it, frequently there is the statement, the Jews said this, or the Jews called out that. And I want to be clear, that story in the Gospel of John that we will reinvigorate and, and relive this day has a very unhappy history. Holy Week was for centuries one of the most common times when crowds would attack synagogues and murder Jews throughout Europe, inspired by this reading. So I just want to be really clear that the, the reference to Jews in this reading is not really about all Jews. Depending on the context, it could be the Jewish authorities at the time. It could be 
Jews who were potentially followers of Jesus. And of course, Jesus was a Jew. All his disciples were Jews. St. Paul was a Jew. So as we set out on this journey, I want to make that very clear, that we don't want to further reinforce uh, a stereotype that is not only false, but has been so profoundly destructive for centuries. And for that, it's time for our prayer. Whereby 
who have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come to Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage for the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a cold with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, Just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them to me. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, the king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. So please take a call.
made it. <laughs> so please, on page four, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Psalm 31. I'll ask you to join in after the asterisk. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consume with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me without solution, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken clock. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They lost me in my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness to save A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain a weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the ear. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are. Together, let us recite this canticle from the Song of Lamentation. Is it not empty to you, all of you who pass by? Please be seated. Please be seated. 
be seated. And readers, please come forward. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. <coughs> Jesus then came with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Anguish and dismay came over him. And he said to them, My heart is ready to break with grief. Stop here and stay awake with me. He went on a little, fell on his face in prayer, and said, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Yet not as I will, but as thou wilt. He came to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, What? Could none of you stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may be spared the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass me, Without drinking it, thy will be done. He came again and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again, and he prayed the third time, using the same words as before. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Still sleeping, still taking your ease. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed to sinful men. Up, let us go forward. The traitor is upon us. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a great crowd armed with swords and cudgels, sent by the chief priests and elders of the nation. The traitor gave them this sign. The one I kiss is your man. Seize him. And stepping forward at once, he said, Hail, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you are here to do. They then came forward, seized Jesus, and held him fast. At that moment, one of those with Jesus reached for his sword and drew it, and he struck at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put up your sword. All who take the sword die by the sword. Do you suppose that I cannot appeal to my father, who would at once send to my aid more than twelve legions of angels? But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that this must be? At the same time, Jesus spoke to the crowd. Do you take me for a bandit, that you have come out with swords and cudgels to arrest me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple, and you did not lay hands on me. But this has all happened to fulfill what the prophets wrote. Then the disciples all deserted him and ran away. Jesus was led off under arrest to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the lawyers and elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance till he came to the high priest's courtyard, and going in, he sat down there among the attendants, meaning to see the end of it all. 
The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some allegation against Jesus on which a death sentence could be based. But they failed to find one, though many came forward with false evidence. Finally, two men alleged that he had said, I can pull down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. At this, the high priest rose and said to him, Have you no answer to the charge that these witnesses bring against you? But Jesus kept silence. The high priest then said, By the living God, I charge you to tell us, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? The words are yours. But I tell you this, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God and coming on the clouds of heaven. At these words, the high priest tore his robes and exclaimed, Blasphemy! Need we call for the witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? He is guilty. He should die. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists, and others said as they beat him, Now, Messiah, if you are a prophet, tell us who hit you. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard when a serving maid accosted him and said, You were here too, Jesus the Galilean. Peter denied it in the face of them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. He then went out to the gateway, where another girl, seeking, said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. Once again he denied it, saying with an oath, I do not know the man. Shortly afterwards, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you are another of them. Your accent gives you away. At this he broke into curses and declared with an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, a cock crowed. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. He went outside and wept bitterly. <laughs> when morning came, the chief priests and the elders of the nation met in conference to plan the death of Jesus. They then put him in chains and led him away to hand him over to Pilate, the Roman governor. When Judas the traitor saw that Jesus had been condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver pieces to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have brought an innocent man to his death. What is that to us? See thy yourself. So he threw the money down in the temple and left them and went and hanged himself. Taking the money, the chief priests argued, this cannot be put into the temple fund, it is blood money. So after conferring, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. This explains the name Blood Acre by which the field has been known ever since. And in this way, fulfillment was given to the pathetic utterance of Jeremiah. They took the thirty silver pieces, the price set on a man's head, for that was his price among the Israelites, and gave the money for the potter's field, as the Lord directed them. Jesus was now brought before the governor, and as he stood there, the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? The words are yours. And to the charges laid against him by the chief priests and elders, he made no reply. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear all this evidence that is brought against you? But he still refused to answer one word to the governor's great astonishment. At the festival season, 
it was the governor's custom to release one prisoner chosen by the people. There was then in custody a man of some notoriety called Jesus Barabbas. When they were assembled, Pilate said to them, Which would you like me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus called Messiah? For he knew that it was out of malice that they had brought Jesus before him. While Pilate was sitting in court, a message came to him from his wife. He had nothing to do with that innocent man. I was much troubled on his account in my dreams last night. Meanwhile, the chief priests and elders had persuaded the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas and to have Jesus put to death. So when the governor asked, which of the two do you wish me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Then what am I to do with Jesus called Messiah? And with one voice they answered, Crucify him. Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Pilate could see that nothing was being gained and a riot was starting. So he took the water and washed his hands in full view of the people, saying, My hands are clean of this man's blood. See to that yourselves. And with one voice the people cried, His blood be on us and on our children. He then released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Pilate's soldiers then took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, where they collected the whole company round him. They stripped him and dressed him in a scarlet mantle, and plating a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head with a cane in his right hand. Falling on their knees before him, they jeered at him, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and used the cane to beat him about the head. When they had finished their mockery, they took off the mantle and dressed him in his own clothes. Then they led him away to be crucified. On their way out, they met a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and pressed him into service to carry his cross. So they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And there he was offered a draught of wine mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. After fastening him to the cross, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots and then sat down there to keep watch. Over his head was placed the inscription, given the charge, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. The passers-by hurled abuse at him. They wagged their heads and cried, you will pull the temple down, you Jews, you, 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 and build it in three days. Come down from the cross to save yourself, if you are indeed the Son of God. So too the chief priests with the lawyers and elders mocked at him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. King of Israel indeed, let him come down from the cross, and then we will believe him. Did he trust in God? Let God rescue him, if he wants him, for he said he was God's son. Even the bandits who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From midday, a darkness fell over the whole land, which lasted until three in the afternoon. And about three, Jesus cried out loud, Eli, Eli. Lemma Sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Some of the bystanders on hearing this said, He is calling Elijah. One of them ran at once and fetched a sponge, which he soaked in sour wine, and held it to his lips on the end of a cane. But the other said, Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. There was an earthquake. The rocks split and the graves opened, and many of God's saints were raised from sleep. And coming out of their graves after his resurrection, they entered the holy city where many saw them. And when the centurion and his men who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and all that was happening. They were filled with awe, and they said, Truly, the man was the Son of God. The music was incredible, 
an incredibly moving experience. And you learn from things like that how easy it is to turn away, to go on with normal life because that's what you've got to do. You've got to put food on the table. To turn away from taking the risk, to see the people who are protesting for justice as the ones who are the danger and the disruptors. A friend of mine who is very involved in civil rights protests many years ago is now in a place where uh, civil rights are endangered. They support the movement pro-democracy in that area. But when they had to get to a doctor's appointment and there was a protest in the way, what they posted on Facebook was they should be disrupting the lives of ordinary people. It's that easy to turn away. It's that easy to say, at the moment, I can't do anything about it and it's in my way. So the stories that we've heard today, first of all, despite what the church has done with it, the procession of palms wasn't quite the way we celebrated it today. There's a possibility that Pilate and the whole Roman entourage were entering on horseback in armor at the other side of town at the same time that Jesus was staging this. We're not sure if it happened at the same time, but it is pretty clear that it was deliberate mockery of the Roman government. It was a plan. It was nonviolent protest. And the words that we say, Hosanna, today they mean something similar to Alleluia, but at the time it meant save us. Save us from the Romans. Save us from poverty. people who are following. If you were a friend of Jesus at that point, where were you? Were you the one that got the donkey and brought their handles and the arrangements ahead of time? Were you the one who gathered the people who came out who were just curious, they came out of their houses to see what was going on, what all the noise was about, and invited them to come in and join in the procession? Were you the one who saw two Roman matrons? This guy, God, get him out of the way, he's a troublemaker. And did you fear for your best friend and what might be coming? Because you knew that this kind of a protest was a red flag to the Roman government. It wasn't anybody, to anybody's surprise that Jesus was then arrested. That's the way the Romans handled it possible insurrections. You find the leader, you remove the leader, and the whole thing falls apart. That's why they didn't arrest Jesus during this procession. Well, they may have been occupied honoring Pilate as he arrived at the other end of the town. But they wouldn't have arrested him in front of the whole crowd because that could stir up this insurrection. They would have waited. And in a day where there are no photographs, and no DNA and no fingerprint evidence. Yeah, they need somebody to point out the right guy in the crowd, because otherwise they all kind of look alike. And Jesus wasn't the only rabbi going around and preaching and gathering a group of people. He wasn't the only potential insurrectionist in the area. So yeah, they needed somebody to point them out. In this week, we get to be a friend of Jesus. We get to relive so much that we pack into this week, the Last Supper, the time when Jesus blesses the bread and the wine and says, do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood. This is my blood. What would that have been like to be there as Jesus' friend at that point? What would it have been like to be Judas, knowing that this was being offered to you, and yet, we're going to betray him the next day. Jesus gives his disciples the last commandment, love one another as I have loved you. 
as Jesus' friend. What would you have thought about that? You're still caught up in the enthusiasm of what seemed like a triumphal arrival in Jerusalem. You're thinking, it can't really go as bad as I'm fearing. It'd be good. What's he talking about? Surely he'll be with us all the time. Surely God will say that. What is it like to be Jesus' friend at that moment? And Jesus is arrested, and his disciples leave him. They betray him. It's by their absence. They're afraid. It's rational to be afraid in those circumstances. They turn away. And the scene plays out, and Jesus is arrested. People turn against him. How easy that is. Today we know how easy it is for people to be manipulated into hating others. These people, this group, these are the enemy. The conspiracy theorists have this set of enemies. The non conspiracy theorists have another set of enemies. Dividing people. It is so easy to get a group joining together caught up in this, whatever their best intentions are. As a friend of Jesus, where would you be? At the Monday Thursday service, we celebrate, we remember the Last Supper, we strip the altar, and then we have a vigil. It used to be all night. Now it's just till midnight. Some of us like all night. Well, it's not fair. That's another conversation. But that comes out of Jesus saying to his disciples, wait with me, pray with me, pray for me. And the disciples falling asleep, and Jesus saying, Can you not watch just one hour? This is the week when you get to put aside your knowledge that it all comes well in the end. You get to put aside all the theories and theologies about why Jesus had to die and what that means for us and what God was doing in this process. This is the week to be Jesus' friend as Jesus is going through the worst week of his life. During the pandemic, many of us had the experience of not being able to see our loved ones in nursing homes, in hospitals. Some of us had the experience of not being able to say goodbye to someone we loved because of the pandemic, not being able to gather together for the memorial service. So we know what it's like to love with your whole heart and not to be able to be present. But this week invites us to be present be present to Jesus and through Jesus to the whole world. This is an impossible week. It's not one to take lightly. We will have plenty of time, 52 more weeks of the year, to talk about the good news. Bring your bells on Easter and celebrate with us. But this week, let your heart be broken. Be a friend to Jesus, that your heart may be filled with love. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Seven, let us together profess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He has sent you to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Hear our cry, O God. And listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give your people a blessing peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of the poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. And together, Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so by the minds of those who shall choose the record of this parish, that we may receive the faithful pastor, who will care for the people, and equip us for our Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Beth Elwood, one of your vestry members. We'll be sharing a few announcements with you today. If you'll reference page 14, as Andy invited us to be a friend of Jesus, we hope you'll join us here at St. John's for the many, many opportunities in this holy week. We will have our noonday prayer as normal, 12 noon in the chapel. On Thursday, on Monday, Thursday, foot washing, Eucharist, and stripping of the altar. And the Garden of Gethsemane from 7 to midnight. Question, do we have to sign up for an hour? Okay, so the sign-up sheet is on the back ministry table so we know who will be here for each hour. On Friday at noon, it's our Good Friday service, and then of course our Eucharist, our Easter Sunday, next Sunday, followed by a reception as well as an Easter egg, egg hunt for the kids. Myself and one other will be your bunnies or Venus. We will lead the kids that are here. We invite you, your neighbors, your nieces, your nephews, come join us. We have lots to 
egg hunt, and that will be outside these back doors. There are a number of announcements in here which I will not go over, so you are welcome to take your service bulletin, but please return this. <laughs> Thank you in advance. And one last thing I'd like to share. We'd like you to, on behalf of your vestry, we'd like you to mark, uh, mark, in the top, mark April 16th, so two weeks from today on your calendar, to join your vestry following the service for a congregational meeting where we have the opportunity to share very good news. I hope you'll be there. Today will be the last day for the new member class that I've been leading. And also this Wednesday will be the last session of our Lenten Soup Supper series. Uh, so if those of you that have been participating in that, please, please come to that. Um, and as Andy indicated, I just want to underline that uh, on Easter, um, if you have some bells, bring them and bring them. Talk more about when to ring it at the appropriate time. And so, friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Oh.
confession is good for the soul. So I confess, I completely spaced on birthdays and anniversaries. So, are there any birthdays and anniversaries? Oh. That's why I reminded you. <laughs> what a coincidence. Anybody else? No? Just, okay, very good. So, friends, if you will please turn to your prayer books. Page 830. It's prayer number 51. Four of Together, friends, watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and honor her wherever she be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when the spirit of sorrow. Raise her up if she falls. In her heart, in thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. remember those who are hurting in Turkey and Syria and Ukraine, our neighbors in Nashville and all who are suffering from the recent tornadoes. And we would like to name those in our own parish who have asked to be on our prayer list, including Rose and Chester, Courtney and family. Charlene and Pete, Peter P, the Wilson family, Katie, Joel and Nancy Walker, Martha Scott, Dave of Friston and family, John Smith and family, Barbara Crinkle and family, Pat Bailey, Mandy Sager, and Bill Myers. Form 4, Prayers for the People, in your bulletin on page 9. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant the light of God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reference to the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, beloved of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Together, friends, let us send our brother. In the name of St. John the Baptist Episcopal Church, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are not one, because we all share one bread. Together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all of the humanity. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. Means the grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that our truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness of all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.